Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut this lit portable display board for wargaming miniatures. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my topic for today is this portable display board. It's been designed in Adobe Illustrator and the pieces are cut on a laser cutter. And I made this because a couple of months ago I attended the Nova Open, which is our local tabletop wargaming convention. And I saw people there carrying their armies around on these beautiful display boards, and I was really inspired to try to make one of my own. This is my army. It's Circle Orboros. It's a hordes army. And I did a design that I felt was consistent with the aesthetic of my army. It's edge lit acrylic, but it's kind of unusual in that it's got a vertical edge lit component and a horizontal edge lit component. I wanted the people to stay in place as I moved them around. So I took these super powerful magnets and put them in the base of my people and uh, embedded them in a matrix in uh, the board underneath. So they stick not too strongly, but enough so that they don't slide around. It is portable. Right now it's plugged into a 12 volt transformer into a plug under the table. But that same plug can be uh, put into the, a similar 9 volt battery pack that's stored inside one of the hollow legs under the board. And the final thing is it does have this little remote and it can do everything the little remote can do. And this is also probably changing the sign behind me because it's the same remote that runs my sign. So I'm going to talk about how to do all of this in this episode. The cobblestone courtyard is a continuous pattern I found on the internet. It's designed so that you can put it together in sections and it goes together seamlessly. Just make sure it's a very clean design with no duplicate lines. I use the perspective grid in Adobe Illustrator to take the cobblestone pattern and make it disappear towards the horizon here under the building. And I drew the building the way I do most things. I put in a reference photo and just drew over it. Each of the key components are on separate layers and basically I would create a door or a window and then I would duplicate it into the other slots. Circle Orboros is kind of a nature-oriented faction so I used a lot of vines and trees but of course you also have to have skulls and wings because those things just go with these types of armies. All of these are done to scale. This backing is 22 inches wide and 12 inches high. My reference page for my structural drawing has the magnets in it. It has the battery pack, both from the top and the side. It has the size of the light strip and the size of the bases of my army. Also the size of the acrylic pieces that I just designed. The middle board is the most complex. It's got the slot for the lights to be installed. And I laid out the small size base with a round cutting hole the size of the magnet and created this matrix that I'm going to use for cutting the holes for the magnets. The bottom layer just has holes on both ends of the light strip for the wires to go down into the hollow legs. And the top has a finishing strip that will hold the acrylic courtyard in place. I also need a way to hold the acrylic backing up and I created this strip and I'll make multiple copies of that and laminate them together. But the bottom layer needs to be different because I want to slide the acrylic courtyard in place so I create this detachable strip and you'll see how I use that later in the video. This is the leg. It's been sized to work around the battery pack. This project cuts pretty quickly on a laser cutter. The longest part is engraving the back just because of the complexity of the detail. Here the laser is cutting the holes for the small magnets to fit in. And uh, I always do a dry fit at Tech Shop to make sure that everything works because if it doesn't, I need to correct it while I'm still there. I decided to paint the magnet layer gray so that the Magnets would kind of fade in, and also this will make the lighting pop better. I always test to make sure things fit. There's the battery pack fitting inside a hollow leg, and then I start gluing the legs together. These all have nail holes in the corner, so basically you do two layers at a time and pound the nail in a little further and just keep going till you're done. And here are all four legs drying 
uh, but ready to go. I didn't feel like I needed any nails in the board itself. I just did a lot of glue. This is wood glue and then I weighed it down with my 4x4 four four inch granite samples and I use some clamps. When that's dry I can add the strip on the top. The magnet layer is 8 inch thick plywood. That's the thickness of my magnets and the rest of it's quarter inch. I glue the back supports together in a process exactly like I showed for the legs. These have nail holes as well. And the nails actually extend a little to help them hold to the board when I glue that on later. At this point, I can glue on the legs. They're four inches by four inches. The granite blocks fit perfectly. And I let that all dry. Now for the lighting. I always practice my soldering before I start, especially on something as tricky as this. RGB lighting strips have four wires that go in a very small space at the end of the strip. And you don't want to be practicing on your light strips, so practice in advance. And the best way to do this, I've found, is to lay some solder down on those four pads. Tin your wires, of course, in advance. And so when you're finally doing the assembly, you're just uh, melding the solder from one to the next. And, of course, test at every step. Then I put a coat of liquid electrical tape on the solder joints and then wrap it up in regular electrical tape. You can buy a controller and receiver like this on Amazon for about $6.50 and a 16 foot strip of lights is about $11. The white part of this assembly is the receiver. It plugs directly into the end of an RGB light set and uh, that little component there is the actual receiver and you can see how it changes the color of the lights. I soldered two 22 inch sections of lights together because I need one on the bottom to drive the vertical piece and one on the back to drive the courtyard. I added enough wire to let it make that right angle turn and I put the wire down into this hollow leg and then back on the other end I've got the wire that goes down to the receiver and the battery pack. The only thing tricky about installing the magnets is they look the same on both sides and of course you have to get them in the same way on every one or some will repel your men and some will attract them. So I put them in a long stack and I'd slide them off the top and I'd know that they were always in the right way. Now I can just slide in my acrylic courtyard and this is the first time I actually see how well it lights up when it's in place. It's kind of cool. I thought I might be able to just put metal in the base of the men, but I learned that going through a quarter inch acrylic, you really need to have magnets on both sides. When everything is together, you can slide in that detachable piece of wood I showed you in the design. That blocks the direct glare of the light and helps keep the light contained to drive the edge lit acrylic. I've left the back clear, but you could also paint that back of it with black acrylic paint and it would pop more. My studio lighting really doesn't do justice to this project. It looks beautiful. I love it. It really showcases the army I've put so much time and love into painting. I have lots of other great projects I'm working on, so if you're interested, please subscribe.